education is known for its neuromyths. And one of the most popular neuromyths is learning styles. You may associate learning styles with Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, but it's important to note that the giant pile of surveys, resources, and books that you may associate with multiple intelligences learning styles is an approach made up by professional development entrepreneurs in the 80s and the 90s and is mostly divorced from anything that Gardner wrote. Read this book to find out more. I mention this because Gardner's on Twitter and he may appreciate the clarification. Gardner has been very clear that it's a mistake to say that an intelligence is a learning style. He's even said it's nonsensical to say that everything should be taught seven or eight ways. All of this is to say students do not learn best through their learning style, and yet so many people hold on to that idea. But what do I mean when we say that learning styles is a myth? Let me tell you about the crossover effect. Here we have two students with very different learning styles. This student's style is visual-spatial. This student is a naturalist learner. If we give a lesson that's best suited for visual-spatial learning, who do you think would do better? Well, according to learning styles, the visual-spatial student would do better. The other student is at a disadvantage here, so maybe she doesn't do as well. Next, our lesson is for the naturalist learning. We would presume that the naturalist learner would do better this time, and the other not so much. And if the theory was true that students learn best in their learning style, we would find what's called a crossover effect. And that would be great evidence of learning styles. But we don't find that. Instead, we find this, or this, or this. And with no crossover, there's no evidence. As noted by Willingham and colleagues, Several reviews that span decades have evaluated the literature on learning styles, and each has drawn the conclusion that there's no viable evidence to support the theory. Maybe you're thinking, well, that may be so, but it works for me, so I'll keep doing it. And there are three problems with that. Problem number one, surveys pigeonhole students. Based on survey results, students are told to stick to their strengths and avoid difficult subjects. Those results teach students that learning should be effortless and easy, and if you find math challenging, maybe you're not a math person. Problem number two, junk pedagogy. Letting students dance at the back of the room during social studies or learn the periodic table by singing the elements might make sense in your lesson, but you should make that decision based on what is best for the lesson, not what is based on a presumed learning style. Problem number three, it's not based on science. We talk to experts, school board officials, and parents as teachers, and when we talk about pseudoscience, we look like we don't know what we're talking about. Learning styles is the flat earth theory of education. Over the last 40 years, we've learned quite a bit about learning. We have heaps of evidence-based pedagogy to share. Sweller's cognitive load theory and Badley's working memory model do a much better job of explaining how people learn than learning styles ever did. I'll do a video on those theories later on. But we can't make room for those ideas until we clear out the bookshelf. Knowing more about learning helps us to be better teachers. And this bad idea has been holding us back for decades.